Good morning, I'm Steve Clifford, and we're here on the soggy British Columbia Sunshine Coast. Going to do a little video on raising queen cells. I learned how to raise queen cells back in southeast Texas in the mid-late 70s. Done a fair bit of it, so I'm happy to uh, show my straightforward, easy-peasy, where we use a single hive as the starter, the finisher, and the breeder. This is a very simple, straightforward, easy method. This one hive is at all at once the breeder, the starter, and the finisher. Uh, I picked it out of the bunch last summer. It was an excellent honey producer and it was exceedingly strong this spring and they're quiet and gentle. So what we're going to do is get it ready to graft into. Okay. The very most important thing is this hive cannot have any extraneous entrances. This hive has to be flying to the bottom entrance only long before you graft into it and I'll explain that as we go along but they can't have any other entrance but the main entrance at the front. And as you can see there's some bees in there. Okay, so down here we've got the queen and the brood. Now, the very first thing when you get this ready to graft is to go through and find the queen. You also need to look for some grafting material. Uh, to speed this up, I've already located the queen and some grafting material. So, when I find a frame to graft with, I put a little tick mark like so. And you can tell whether those tick marks are fresh or old. After the bees travel stain them a little bit, they get looking like that. So this is the one I made this morning. So I know this is my frame of grafting material. So I'm gonna take it out. Park it over here for a sec. So the brood box now comes off the bottom board. This box is going to receive the freshly grafted cells. So all we want in here are two frames of pollen and the feeder. So there's our comb of pollen. This frame of brood needs to come out. as does this one. Now I fed this a feeder full of syrup. They got lots and lots of bees in there. So Everything that makes them want to raise a queen is happening. They're broodless and queenless. They're crowded. They're well fed. And they have plenty of pollen. So this double screen will separate them from the brood box and the queen. 
the entrance at the back will allow the older bees to fly back around and join the front of the colony, but they will not be able to have any sense of where the queen is. And you can graft into this hive immediately and they'll feed the queen cells because all those baby bees in there that have been feeding brood suddenly have nowhere for that uh, royal jelly to go. So they will, they will jump on freshly grafted queen cells immediately. Keep this fancy inner cover on there just to make sure that the bees can't get back up there and join the queen. Now this is our frame of grafting brood. I don't want to shake it too hard or I'm going to upset the, uh, upset the larva. So I'm just going to shake it a little bit. Those guys will crawl back home. bees on there. Okay. Off to the garden off to the garden shack. So here's our frame of grafting material. Um, what I always tell people is you don't want to find the teeny tiniest little larva you want to find the next step up. The little teeny tiny ones are a lot tougher to graft so the next step up is the right size. Um, this is my time-tested grafting tool. I think I made this back in the late 70s down in Texas. It's a core of a brass welding rod and you can see the propolis has built up on it and sort of suits my grip, I guess. So to keep track of where I am on the, on the okay. cells, I keep my thumb on the one I'm doing. What I try to do is attack the larva from here or here on about a third of the body so the third that's hanging down, I can touch onto the bottom of the queen cell cup and release it. You can't tip the larva over. It has little feeders going down into its puddle of royal jelly. And if you flip it over, it'll die. Yeah. So I touch her down on the part that's hanging off the needle and in she goes. Too big. So now we got to hustle this in. Okay. You don't answer the phone. You don't go for tea. You uh, 
Where are we going? Back to the hive. Well, we're going to hustle these back into the hive. The sooner they get back in the bees, the better. So once again, all we've got here is two combs of pollen, feed, and lots and lots of bees. They've been queenless for 15 or 20 minutes. That's plenty long enough. The baby bees that have been feeding brood in the hive now have all, all the reason they, had, they need to jump on those freshly grafted cells and feed them. The queen's up here with the brood. There's no brood in that cell box, Brox, only two frames of pollen and way, way more than enough bees, but more is good. That's it. This is step number two. This, this hive I grafted into yesterday. So after 24 hours of what we just did to this one, you want to, what we, we call this, we're re, gonna reverse this one, all right? So the queen and all the brood are here. So she's going to come off. <clears throat> the cell box is going to come off. And we're going to put the brood and the queen back on the floorboard. I got a frame of brood here, so I'm just going to sneak one more out of here. As luck would have it, we found the queen. She is right there. It's always cool when you first comb her. So I will just pluck her off. We're back. Sorry, ma'am. Okay, now that they've started these cells, we don't need that double screen anymore. But we do need a queen excluder. One thing that's really crucial is that you got to make sure that there's no queen cells on these combs because a virgin can pass through this excluder and if that happens she will certainly destroy the queen cells. So we got to make sure uh, that there's no supersedure cells in the brood box. So just like the hive we just did, all that's here are two frames of pollen and the cells that I grafted yesterday.
looks like they hit reasonably well. Any Anything where they're drawing wax is going to be a hit. So here's a miss. Here's a miss. This one fell off. Looks to me like they hit pretty good. You can see the beginnings of the royal jelly. That little white film in there is the feeding of royal jelly. You can tell these bees are queenless, they're crying for a queen. Feeding those queen cells is a must for these bees. That's their only hope to get themselves queen right and back in business. So now what I'm going to do is take these frames of brood, sandwich them one on one side of the cells and one on the other that brood is going to draw more baby bees up to the excluder and help them feed the queen cells that's that's all that's required to do until these cells are mature at 10 days and then we'll harvest them Um, so we're going to harvest these cells. They're 10 days old and the key thing here about their age is the day you graft them does not count. The next day after grafting is day number one. So um, harvest them on the 10th day. They're pretty tough. They can take some jostling around and they'll hatch somewhere 12, 16 hours from now. I know this is important. As you can see, that hive has some power. This is a super duper breeder hive. I can't get them to sting me, but that might jinx things, so I won't say it. Okay, we'll go in the house and pop these off. Okay, so these queen cells are 10 days old, ready to be used. Um, they didn't hit too bad. I like to see them like this. They're all uniform. Uh, if you try to produce too many, uh, they'll be smaller and they'll be tinier on the ends, but these have a nice uniform size. The burr comb is often unavoidable. I have to feed these hives well to get them to produce decent cells so don't like the burr comb being here but uh, it's unavoidable so these are just pinned to that little stick Don't do this in front of a camera very often, so it's a little weird, but it's that little bit of burr comb I can just peel off. Yeah. Four of these go nicely in that cup of that egg carton.
You can see the head of that one's starting to deteriorate. That means she's not too far from hatching. These are really tough now. Uh, they're, they can take some handling, bouncing around at day 10. Um, at day 6, their wings are forming. They're like jelly. You don't even want to look at them very hard. But at this, at this stage in their development, they can, they can take some handling. They can be upside down. They can, they can take some abuse. Yeah, we, we candled them, we held them up to the light, and we could see a little bit of residual jelly, but not a whole bunch. So that means they are they did develop, they consume most of their royal jelly, and we got a we're pretty sure that we've got a virgin queen in there. So there they are, ready to go. The egg carton's a cheap, easy way to uh transport them. Um they should travel somewhere between 80 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit will kill them, so you have to be reasonably careful. I've got a cooler here with a couple of hot water bottles, and the thermometer says just a little over 80 degrees, so that's just right. So from here in the cooler and off to the bee yard. Crucial things are plenty of strength in the hive. Um, another crucial thing is no virgins running around. You really got to be careful to not have any supersedure cells because uh, as I said before, a virgin can pass through that queen excluder and sh first thing she'll do is kill off all the queen cells. So lots of bee power and you know I tell people that when you get your queens like this you get a queen that's never been caught, caged, stored, forced to quit laying, mailed and forced to be reintroduced. There's no more natural way than to put this queen cell in a new hive let her fly mate and and that's it. Great.